Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this uh, video tutorial um, in the C++ for Complete Beginners series, we're going to take a look at if else, and uh, we're going to take a little bit of a further look at conditions. So let's let's start by outputting a um, a really simple menu, which is a very common thing to do in command line programs. So I'm going to say here C out. And let's have a, a menu option so the user can enter a number to take some particular action. Let's say one and um, add new record or something like that. Endler. And um, I, I want to have a, a bunch of different options. I'm just going to copy this to save time. Let's have a few of these. And let's say uh, we can have delete record and maybe view record and search record, search record, and let's have quit. So the idea is that there's some kind of database and you want to search it and view items and delete items and that sort of thing. And this is a menu that lets you do it. If we look at this now, um, that should look pretty good. Looks pretty good. Um, we need to change these numbers here, of course. And one, one thing you can do in, in strings and that's often helpful for lining stuff up, especially if you were to put the numbers here at, at the end, let's say, is you can include a tab in a string. And in C++, C++ and many other languages, between double quotes, you can use these things called um, control sequences. And uh, what they look like is uh, you need a backslash, it must be a backslash, not a forward slash, and then you have a single character like that. And so this, this actually outputs a tab. You can also use backslash n to output a new line. And there are other options, but I think those are by far the most common. Um, also, if you want to actually output a double quote within double quotes, you can use um, backslash double quote to do that. Because otherwise you couldn't put double quotes within double quotes, but anyway, Let's, let's put some slash T's in here, some tab characters. So I'm going to stick them all after the, the numbers. So this each one of these backslash control sequences, they're only a single character uh, and often they're invisible characters like a tab. Um, so let's, let's take a look at that. So I'll run this and you can see now that we've got tabs there. It doesn't really look that good, but I, w I wanted to show you the tab anyway, because um, often it is very useful. Let's get the um, selection from the user. Let's say C out, enter your selection like this and end the. In fact, let's have a flush there so they, they can enter the number on the same line as this. And let's get that input. So we, we've done this before lots of times. Um, I'm going to say int, uh, let's call it, I'll just call it value and C in value. Now um, we want to take various different actions depending on what the user enters. And of course we could use an if. We could say uh, if value equals uh, let's say 5 then um, let's do a CL. Uh, uh, let's say are you sure you want no, let's, let's not do that actually. <laughs> let's just say application quitting. Well, this is a bit artificial because we're not actually going to take any action here. We're just going to output some text, but it's, um, it's just kind of a demo. So let's spell application correctly and I'm going to run this and we'll check that it works. So if I, if I run this now, um, if I enter like four or something, doesn't say anything, nothing happens because I haven't told it to do anything if I hit four. But if I hit five, it's going to say application quitting. So we've seen this in the last tutorial, the only difference was we use strings there, but um, this works very well with integers as well. Now um, supposing you want to take an action if something's true, but um, you want to take a different action if that thing isn't true. So you want to choose between two possible alternatives. Uh, let's let's say, for example, here that um, we want to um, we want to say 
that the user um, let's let's say the user has, has like um, some kind of privileges and certain users can't use these first two options so we want to take one um, one action if they enter a number that's less than three and if it's greater than or equal to three then we want to take a different action so we can say if value and I'm going to use less than here less than three then um, we want to say see out uh, insufficient privileges to um, use these menu options like that. Endler. So this this is we read this as less than and there's also greater than which looks like that. But we want to use less than here. Now the the way I remember this, um, well, when you first start programming, it's difficult to remember which way round this greater than or less than goes. And uh, yeah, after, after you've been programming a while, you just kind of automatically know. But um, a good way to remember this is that the condition is true here. If the smaller value is at the smaller end of this symbol and the bigger value is at the bigger end. So uh, this arrow, it's got like a point to it, small end, and it's got a big end, the kind of prongs there. And this condition will evaluate to true if the small value is at the small end, if value is smaller of the two values. And at the big end here, we have three. And it, that also applies to greater than. This condition will be true if value is greater and three was the smaller value. Let's use less than here. And um, let's see how that works. So this is, this is pretty simple again. So if we enter a number um, greater than three, uh, let's say six, nothing's going to happen. Uh, the value, this, this evaluates to false. So value is not less than three. So this, so value less than three is, is false. But if we enter a value that is less than three, let's enter one, then um, this condition evaluates to true and it says insufficient privileges. It does, it does this. Now, uh, what if we want an alternative? So we want to say, okay, if the value is less than three, we do this. But if it's equal to three or it's greater than three, in other words, if this is false, we want to do something else. And we can do that just with an else. So immediately after the closing bracket of if, we're going to type else, open a new curly bracket like that, hit return. Eclipse has put the closing one in for me. And we can say see out um, uh, privilege level sufficient. Kind of a strange thing to say in a program, but it's just a demo. So let, let's see, let's run that. And now if we enter uh, two, let's say, then insufficient privileges. If we enter three, then it says privilege level sufficient. So it's so this is now um, this is now false because value is not less than three; it's equal to three. So it does the else bit of the if. So one of these conditions is always going to execute. It's just a question of which one. Um, let's let's just try a, a bigger number than three. We could enter anything really, like sixty six, and it will it will do this. So this is if else, and I, I want to draw your attention. Uh, to the fact that I've indented the stuff between these curly brackets by a tab. So you could write it like this, where well, you could put the brackets anywhere and miss out tabs left, right and center. But um, it's really hard to read this, especially if you have multiple lines in here. So you should absolutely never do that. Um, wherever you have curly brackets, code between curly brackets, indent the code between them by a tab. And if you have curly brackets within curly brackets, then the code between these will get indented by another tab. So the indentation level clues you in to how the code is working with the brackets. And if you ever get confu confused, you can always use a shortcut. Um, I think it's Control Shift F on Windows or Command Shift F on Mac, or you can just right click and go to, it's a bit slow, go to source and format and there's the control um, sequence for my Mac here. We'll do that and then you can see it automatically indents it. Uh, so this this is if else. Um, you, you can use it as well with um, uh, equals equals. So like you know you could say um, if 
value equals equals five, then we could say C out quitting endler else in the curly brackets uh, C out um, well, normally we'd have a loop here to get the option level again, but let's just say here not quitting, just for a just a really simple, slightly useless demo of this. Uh, so let's let's run that, see what happens. So um, now, if we say like four, so we're going to get privilege level sufficient, and then it says not quitting uh, because this evaluates defaults, so we get this. Let's run it again and enter five. So the first if now is still saying privilege level sufficient because value is not less than three. Then it says, is value equal to five? And the answer is yes. So it does this bit of this if. Um, so that, that's basically it for this tutorial. We've seen, um, uh, we've seen greater than and equal to, well, we've seen greater than and less than, and we've seen if else. Um, so, to practice this, uh, try to uh, maybe try to write a little application like this. Output your own menu, um, use some tabs in it just for a bit of practice, and try to take some different actions depending on what number the user enters. You can also try this with strings if you like. Uh, the more practice you do, the better. Um, I don't like to give particular actual test questions because. Um, I don't think they're that valuable myself. I think it's much better if you make up a little program somehow that uses uh, things like greater than or less than and um, if else. Make one up and you have that extra kind of mental stretch of making something up yourself. So if you can't think of anything, then just try um, creating this application, something closely similar. And if you want to get creative, that's even better. So that's it for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're going to look uh, a little bit more. We've got one more video on if, um, if else, and we're going to look at how you can have multiple conditions in, um, in if, because here clearly you actually want to choose between different specific alternatives rather than just uh, looking at ranges of numbers. And we're going to look at how you can do that in the next tutorial. So until next time, happy coding.